Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, riding solo right now just uh, to talk about the Ravens' fourth-round picks. They had a pick early in the fourth round, then a pick later in the fourth round. So they got two picks done in the fourth, uh, two positions, one at wide receiver, which a lot of people are excited about, the second at corner, which I, I think is a little interesting. But I just want to talk about them real quick, uh, give you a quick breakdown of the players. Later on, we'll talk about what we think more in depth when Glenn's on the show, of course. But I want to give you my initial thoughts um and then my thoughts on the Ravens moving forward in this draft kind of what they've done and what we have remaining so a few things Devontae Walker is the wide receiver out of North Carolina previous to North Carolina he was at Kent State that's right Kent State um and look this kid I think is one of those players where two things one it's a pick your type flavor uh two it's a a drafting for potential at this point in the draft early on in the fourth first of all I want to say six foot two uh, he's 200 pounds, a big physical player who can put stress on the defense because of his size, but also because he's incredibly explosive. Um, now, the downside is that he's not a finished product, right? That uh, he's a good vertical threat, but he's relatively inconsistent with catching the football, uh, which obviously is job number one. You got to you gotta catch the football. But there have also been moments where he's been able to make catches and, and grabs in traffic. So uh, basically the way that I see it is that if he's able to sure this up, I think he can be a, uh, a dynamic game changing player in the NFL. Uh, I like this pick. I'm excited to see what he can do. I think he has a really high ceiling and something in addition to that. If you guys have obviously your Ravens fans, you know, as well as I, that the Ravens haven't drafted the biggest guys at wide receiver, right? Like I think Rashad Bateman has been our tallest drafted guy. Not that height is everything, but certainly one, a guy that not only has height, but that can go up and get it, right? Glenn talks about high-pointing the ball all the time. Uh, so this kid has that potential. He has that on tape, and I think that just adds to the arsenal of players, uh, and I think it's a it's a great value pick there. Uh, so that's an exciting one. Now, I, I got to be honest, on the next one, I'm, I'm not quite as excited about not because of the player. It's not a knock on him. TJ Tampa is who we took late in the fourth round, uh, and he's a cornerback out of Iowa State. Now, there's some really great upside to him as well, actually similar to the receiver, and that he's got unique size and mobility with that size. For a corner, he's 6'2", 200 pounds, the same as the receiver that we just drafted, uh, but he moves really well. Uh, so, you know, he has some struggles with footwork, uh, but he has the potential to be a starting outside uh, corner. Now, the only reason I, I was a little perplexed by the pick is just because we've now gone with two corners and one offensive lineman. In this draft, we've made five picks. We've taken co two corners, one offensive lineman, a wide receiver, and an edge player. Um, my only thought was simply that uh, this guy must have fallen into their lap and must have been too good to pass up on. And if you do some reporting on him, you, you, a lot of people believe he should have been in the top 75 of prospects in this draft based on his unique size and, and fluidity. Uh, but because of, you know, some struggles in his footwork and some inconsistencies on tape, they have, you know, he's been knocked down into the fourth round. So I'm sure he just fell here and the Ravens were thought he was too good to pass up on. All that being said, my big concern here for the Ravens moving forward is simply what are we doing at offensive line? Do the, do the Ravens believe in what is later on in the draft? Is it really that deep at interior offensive line? Um, because we're not going to get a left tackle anymore. I mean, I think that's outside the window. We've got a stalwart at right tackle, uh, but I think we need to figure out what's going on with the guard. Are they, are they that excited about Voorhees? Are they that excited about Cleveland? Something like that. I mean, um, I hope so. I hope that there's there's a lot of uh, growing left to go for those guys and they can kind of fill out those roles. But I'm concerned that we just need more horses in the stable, for lack of better terms. We need more at-bats at offensive line. Uh, but I also know we're at this point, we're not drafting for need. It's really about best player available. So look, if this kid was there, he was too good to pass up on. I'm okay with it. He's got unique upside and taking a fourth round guy at corner that has the unique skill set and tape to prove that he can be a starting outside corner in the NFL is rare and exciting. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do overall. I like both the picks. Like I said, a little perplexed that we're not taking more swings. But if if there aren't guys that they covet, like Eric said, they're not going to reach, right? They're not just going to take a guy because he's at a good position. 
especially or at the position of need, especially at this point in the draft. Uh, so looking forward to later on the rest of the day. So at the fifth, sixth, and seventh round to go in the entirety of the drafts, the Ravens still have a handful, a few picks left. Uh, we'll also have uh, one of the guys that covers the Clemson Tigers on tonight to talk about Nate Wiggins. So excited digging all that. Uh, give us your thoughts on these picks below. Uh, get excited for tonight. Of course, we'll be back and uh, we'll we'll give a summary of the entire draft, the rest of the picks, and then we'll talk about uh, Nate Wiggins in entirety. Uh, but for now, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, see you.